going on guys? Nick Santini here and on today's video we're going to be going over overclocking and more specifically overclocking the Ryzen 5 series of CPUs. So let's get started. For today's overclocking demonstration I'll be using the Ryzen 5 1600 CPU, the MSI B350 Tomahawk motherboard, and the EK Waterblocks S240 cooling loop. So for some of you, this may be the first time you've ever overclocked a CPU. So there's some things that I think you should probably know. So for starters, overclocking your CPU can actually damage your CPU. And while overclocking, it will definitely void your warranty. So just know that ahead of time before you start to overclock your CPU. So the amount that you'll be able to overclock your CPU will depend on a couple things. The first thing is your cooling solution. The second thing is what voltage you're comfortable running your CPU at. And the third thing is the silicon lottery. Not all of us get lucky and have CPUs that overclock to crazy speeds. So just keep that in mind. Overclocking just raises the frequency of the base clock of the CPU. For instance, the Ryzen 5 1600 that I'm using has a base clock of 3.2 gigahertz. So we're going to be raising that past even the boost clock, which is 3.6 gigahertz, to around 3.8 to 3.9 gigahertz. To do this, you have to raise the voltage, and there's definitely things that you need to consider when raising the voltage. CPUs are actually really sensitive to electricity. Even an increase in like a tenth of a volt can be enough to fry the CPU. Luckily, with modern motherboards, they make it to where you can apply enough voltage to actually damage the CPU. However, this isn't always the case, so you need to be careful. And lastly, when you increase the voltage applied to the CPU, you also increase the temperature of the CPU. So you wanna make sure that you don't exceed the manufacturer's maximum rated CPU temperature, which in my case is 95 degrees Celsius. Now, I don't think we're going to go anywhere near 95 degrees Celsius, but you just want to keep that in mind. And as Uncle Ben used to say, with great voltage comes great responsibility. Or at least I think he said that. To start this overclock, we're going to boot into the BIOS, and you'll see something that is relatively similar to this. Um, but what we want to do is go to the advanced settings. And then in my case, I'm going to go to the overclock settings. Now, depending on your uh, BIOS, you may have to dig around a little bit to find these settings, um, but they are there um, as long as you have the B350 or X370 chipset. So then we're gonna go to, uh, we're gonna set overclock explore mode on mine to expert. Again, you may have something very similar. Um, for MSI BIOS, uh, we have CPU frequency where we actually are just going to set the CPU frequency. Um, some may have an offset frequency, some may have a um, multiplier where it has like a bus speed of 100 and you have to change the multiplier to like 34 let's say for 3.4 gigahertz or in this case it would be uh, the multiplier would be 38.25 I guess. Um, so again that's going to uh, depend on what BIOS that you have. Since I have the MSI one, I am just going to set the frequency. Now, this is the stable overclock that I have going right now. So I know for a fact that this will run at 3.82, uh, well, 825 megahertz um, at a voltage of 1.3375. So, but if I was just starting out, what I would do is I would change this frequency to, let's say, let's go with a 3.9 gigahertz. So I would change that to 3,900. And then this voltage, I would start off at probably 1.4. You wanna start it off um, as high as you're comfortable going. I don't wanna have to run this at 1.4 the entire time, but I'm going to start it off there and hopefully be able to back down. So from there, we're going to exit out of the BIOS and save the settings. So as you can see, it's going to save this configuration. The CPU frequency is at 3900 um, or 3.9 gigahertz. And then the voltage, we have it set to 1.4. So now that we're on our desktop here, um, the first program we are going to want to run is CPU-Z, just to make sure that um, our core speed is at the actual speed that we set it to. So as you can see, mine is like just under, it's, uh, 
3,899 megahertz. So we know it's running at the core clock that we set it at. So the next program we're gonna run is Hardware Monitor. And in Hardware Monitor, it's nice because we can see the different cores and we can see the different threads here. And the main thing is we can see the temperature of the CPU and what it's currently running at. So from there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna close out of this, out of CPU Z, and I'm going to run the Prime 95 test. So right now we're running the Prime 95 test and we wanna see just how long um, this test can run. Now, I usually try to run it for about 30 minutes. I think if it passes the 30 minute mark, then it's a stable overclock. To ensure that it's at maximum stability, you wanna run it for a couple hours or so. Um, just to make sure that the computer doesn't crash or anything like that and that you have a stable overclock. Now, if for whatever reason, one of these cores, the utilization goes down to zero, you wanna stop the test because that means one of the cores has failed the test. So as you can see right now in hardware monitor, the CPU temperature is about 71 degrees, which is okay. If it gets around to 90 to 95 degrees Celsius, it will start to throttle. So we don't want to go that high. If we do go that high, we'll have to lower the voltage. So now we're back into the BIOS. You couldn't see, but Prime 95 stopped working, and I think that's because of our overclock right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the overclock settings, and because I don't want it to run it at more than 1.4 volts, I'm going to switch the CPU frequency. Now, it's possible that this will run stable at 3.9 gigahertz, but it would have to be at more than 1.4 volts, which I'm not comfortable doing for a long overclock. So what I'm going to do instead is change the CPU frequency to 3.825. So now that I've lowered the CPU frequency, I'm going to go back, save the settings, and try those tests one more time. So we can see right here that it's running at the 3.825 gigahertz and it's running at 1.392 volts. One of the things that you're gonna to wanna to also do is run Cinebench before you run Prime 95. And the reason for that is because it's gonna save you some time. If it fails to run the Cinebench benchmark, then it's definitely not going to run stable with Prime 95. So that can save you a lot of time. And again, we're gonna run Prime 95. We want it to run for at least 30 minutes so that we know that the overclock is at least relatively stable. All right, so Prime 95 ran for 30 minutes with no problems. So what I'm gonna do from there is I'm gonna go back into my overclock settings. I'm gonna lower the voltage to 1.34, which will lower that to the 1.3375. And the reason why I chose this is because I know it'll run at this voltage. In your case, what you're gonna to wanna to do is lower it little by little and test it in Prime 95 for the 30 minutes and do that until it doesn't pass Prime 95. When it doesn't pass Prime 95, you're gonna to wanna to go back and set it to the last known good voltage and then your overclock will be complete. So there you have it. I hope that helped you guys overclock your CPUs. Um, I tried to make this as informative as possible and basically went through the process of how I overclock my CPUs. Let me know in the comments below what you guys have overclocked yours to. If you like the video, um, I recommend either subscribing to me, because that'd be awesome, or liking this video and some of my other videos. I mean, it really helps me out a lot. Also, if you haven't seen my bill guide video on this, go check that out. It's pretty cool. I think you guys will like it. Um, people have liked it so far. So go check that out. I'll have a link for it in the description as well as the little eye up there. I'll have links below for all the parts that I used in this build, so check those out. And as always, guys, I'll see you on the next one.